guys and welcome to my first YouTube video. I'm very excited for this. Um, I'm going to try to give you guys as much value as possible inside this video. All right, so this is based on a question that I was asked by a student. All right, so um, it is basically if you have any type of website with a listing, right? I just came to Amazon just because it's a common, um, common website and I'm going to just search for say iPhone as an example. Now, what my student wants to do is he wants to scrape data from all the listings, but he doesn't want just the surface level data scraped. He wants to scrape data from within each page. So you click into the page. He wants to scrape data such as the description um, or the other sellers or maybe the price or the ratings, anything inside this page or even maybe the URL. Click back and then click into the next one and scrape data then go back into the next one and then when when it reaches the end he wants it um, pagination to be built in which will then go to the next page click the next listing and continue the loop all right so i'm going to show you how we can build this um, within your path there's usually an extract structured data wizard that you can use but that will only scrape the surface level data on each listing all right, I'll show you how to do that too, um, but I'm also going to show you in this video how to um, build a custom wizard, if you can call it that. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a new process. Um, I'm going to call it custom extract structured data. Description, I'll leave that blank for now and I'll click create. All right, so it's just restoring dependency and creating all the workspaces um, when you're starting a new bot. So we'll just let that run and we can click open main workflow. And now we have a blank workflow to work with. Great, so um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show you the data scraping and I'm gonna show you how this wizard works. So, um, it tells us to first open our browser app or document where we want to extract data from. Second, click next in the dial in this dialog and hover the mouse over the um, the mouse cursor over a data source field. And third, click that field. All right. So let's do that. Click next. So we'll click this first name in this listing, which is Apple iPhone XR. All right. Then it says to create a pattern, you need to indicate a similar field, preferable the last in the collection. So let's scroll all the way to the last in the collection. All right, I'm going to ignore the sponsored ads. I'll just use this one as the last one. Next, and I'll select that. Then we can um, configure the columns. So extract text. I'm going to call this the listing name. All right, so that's the name of the listing. And then we can also extract the URL, right? URL, and we can click next. And then there you have it. Here is all the listings on the page and all the um, URLs. So um, this is basically useful. We can even then extract correlated data like the prices or whatever else you want. Um, but I'm not going to be showing you this. What I wanna show you is how to build a custom extract structure data which clicks into each of the listings. All right, cause I'm sure you can notice with this method, we can't get the data inside of each of the listings, right? We can't get data inside this page. Like let's say we wanted this description um, or something else. We weren't able to do that with the wizard. So I'm gonna show you how to build that. And it's it's quite technical. It uses um, a whole lot of while loops. It uses um, uh, uh, variables inside of selectors, etc. So um, because we're dealing with a browser, first thing we need to do is use an attach browser activity right and we are going to be attaching to this amazon website we it's always good practice to come to your selector and make sure that your browser um, selected is as dynamic as possible so we can see here we have this property html window name blah 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 i'm going to uncheck that because it looks very complicated it looks like it's not going to be dynamic for any page we go on to um, for the title, Amazon.com, Apple iPhone 8, you see it's it's referring to the specific page. We don't want that, so I'm going to delete all of that. And I'm going to replace that with an asterisk. So it'll be Amazon.com with, with a wildcard, and this is going to reference 
any searched page on Amazon. Right, so if we come here, mm, let's validate that. Maybe it's it's better to actually come. There you go. You can see it, it made the updated changes there. And it just omitted this, which is basically like deleting it. But I'm just going to actually come and hold delete on my keyboard here just to actually delete it, just so it looks like a cleaner selector. So there we have it. We have our HTML tags, then we have app equals Chrome and title amazon.com with an asterisk. Validate that, click highlight to make sure it's selecting the browser properly. And we can click OK. Next steps um, from here is we want to use a while loop. So I'm going to come here and let's search for while. And let's drag the while into the do sequence over here. So what we want to do is we want to this condition to run while um, we while, while we loop through each of these listings. So how we're going to do this is by referencing an index property inside each of these listings. So usually when you have any listings, there'll be an, a property called index IDX, which refers to the first listing. This index will be one index two, index three, four, five, etc for every single index on the page. So I can show this to you if we come to UI Explorer over here. We come to indicate element and let's select this first listing. So now this first listing should have a property called IDX equals one. So just looking right here or here, we, it doesn't look like we have anything with an IDX or index property. So the way you need to get that is by manipulating or tweaking your selector so that you can um, find that index property. So um, we can start by unchecking the on name property. This is basically the name of the listing. We know this is going to be different for every listing we search. So we can uncheck that. It's not helpful to us at all. But by unchecking that, we notice that it creates this IDX equals 19. All right. So IDX is the property we look looking for. However, 19 is obviously the wrong index. We wanted to say index equals one. So we need to maybe select other properties to make this reference the correct um, listing index um, so that we can get the correct index equals one. So we can try by selecting other properties, maybe this class over here. And look at that by checking the class it made our index equal to one, which is what we wanted. All right, um, it'll also be good to come here and delete this whole long thing again. Doesn't look like that's adding any value. All right, if we delete this, let's make sure that our index is still equal to one. Yes, it is, that didn't change. Amazon.com, let's also just replace this with iPhone with a wildcard. And that looks fine, let's validate that and it's green, which means it's working. Fantastic. So I'm just going to highlight this selector and I'm going to control C on my keyboard to copy it. And we are going to be using this in our click activity. All right. So I just want to show you if I highlight here, you see how it highlights in red, the first listing. If I change index equals to two over there and now I click highlight, oh, I first have to click validate, validate just to update it. And now I click highlight. There you go. Now it's highlighting the second index. And then the same will apply to index three, four, etc. So let's close this. I'm going to come back here into our while and I'm going to use a click activity. Drag in our click into the body of our while and I'll just indicate a listing, but it doesn't matter because we're going to edit that anyway. So over here I'm going to delete all of this and I'm going to click Control V. And it's going to paste in our selector we just created now in our UI Explorer. So we can validate that. It's green. That's fantastic. However, we see that index here is one. This is a static number. So we need to make this dynamic to change for each listing. All right. And I'll show you how to do that now. So I'm just going to click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to our variables. And I'm going to create a var variable called um, listing index. Okay. The variable type will be an integer because it's a number one, two, three, etc. Scope, we'll set the scope to the sequence and we'll give it a default value of one. 
All right, so um, listing index is now referring to the value that is going to be this value over here. All right, um, now we just want to count here how many listing indexes there are on this page. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen listing indexes. Okay. So let's go with 16 and we can say while the listing index is less than or equal to 16. All right, remember a while loop runs while it's true. All right, so while the listing index is one, two, three, four, all the way till 16, it's gonna run for that listing index um, and it'll run until it reaches 17 and then it'll stop. Cool, um, or it'll run on 16 and then stop. So let's just rename this from while to loop through listings. This click span, we can call this click listing. And we will also need to add an assign over here to increment. All right. So this is now going to say, so every time this runs, we want to change the listing index to listing index plus one. Now what we are doing here is we are adding one to the default value of one. So it'll be after the first run of one, it's gonna be two, then three, then four, all the way till listing index is 16. And the place where we're gonna use this listing index variable is inside our selector that we just created in this index property over here. So we have it set to one. So you can actually add in a variable into your selector by clicking control space and then it'll come up with this pop-up where you can choose your variable. So we'll double click listing index and you'll notice how it adds these open double braces, the variable name and then close double braces. So what this is doing is it is adding a variable into your selector, which is exactly what we want to do. We can validate that. You can see it turns green and we can click OK. Just a side note, the reason that that validated is because we have a default value of one for our listing index. If this default value didn't exist on the browser, it would run into an error. So for example, if we use a default of zero, right? When we come here, you'll see that it's red. If we validate it, it's not a real index. Um, so that is good. I'm just gonna come back, uh, where was it here? And change this default value to one, great. So we can try and run this and see if it's going to click onto our first listing, which is this one. All right, so let's run this and see if this is working for us. So um, it seems like it worked. However, you'll notice it was a bit jumpy there because I was moving my pointer um, while I was trying to click on a listing. So to avoid that issue, it's always best practice to come to your click listing activity or your any click activity and check your simulate click property to true. This means that the click will be happening in the background instead of the pointer having to move on the screen, leaving your pointer to be free to be moved around. So let's come back here. So we wanted to click Apple iPhone XR on the run. So let's try run this again and see if it works. There you go, Apple iPhone XR, and it worked. Now we want to go back to the previous browser. We can also click this back to results here. And now it should click into the second listing. There you go, Apple iPhone 8, which is the second listing. Now if I click back manually, it's gonna click on the third one, etc. So we can build in this click back to results um, into our bot. We don't have to manually do it like I'm doing it now. So we can use another click activity for that, right? So we can drag in another click indicate element inside browser and you want to select this back to results over here click that that's good we can rename it to click back to results and let's come to our selector looking at, at that it looks like our title is dynamic we have our wildcard and this looks fine we can validate that and click ok it's also good remember we need, want to set, set our simulate click to true Great, so now what this is gonna do is it should loop through each listing, open it, go back, go to the next one, go back, next one, go back, etc. So let's test this and make sure it's working. It's always good to um, 
test the bot while you building it to make sure that it's working as you expect. So there you go, this seems to be working. It's clicking into um, each listing in order, um, following the index one, two, three, four, etc. Great, so now next step, let's actually scrape something from inside these pages. All right, I'm gonna come and just stop this. And let's try and scrape something. All right, so we can scrape maybe the body of the text or anything. In this case, I'm gonna scrape the URL of the of the page right um, my student who had a question was asking about the URL so I'll just use the URL in this example but let's say you did want to scrape anything from the page itself you would simply just use a get text property or get text activity so you'd use a get text here you would indicate whatever you want to select maybe the price um, or whatever the property is and you had assign that value to a variable I'm going to delete this and I'm going to show you how to get our URL. And you might be thinking, oh, well, you can just use the get text to get the URL. But you actually cannot. Let me show you why. If we use the get text and I indicate element inside browser and I try to select the URL, you'll see it just highlights the entire browser. It doesn't let me select the URL. So the way to do this is to use the get attribute activity. So I'm going to delete this and let's go to get attribute. There you go. So the get attribute um, activity is used when you want to get one of the properties on the back end of one of your UI elements. It's very useful. Um, so I'll drag this into here. And you can see here there's a little drop down, right? And here there's a whole lot of um, properties already showing. Now, the reason we're getting all these properties is because we are inside a attach browser activity, right? and this automatically is detecting the properties of the browser. So if we scroll to the bottom, you'll notice here there's a property called URL, and that's exactly the property we're looking for. So um, we can use this URL property and we can rename this from get attribute to get URL. Then we can come here to the results and we can create a new variable and call it um, URL or listing URL. List, listing URL, enter, great. Um, so now what this will do is it's going to assign the URL of the browser to the variable called listing URL. Let's just come here. Let's just check the, our properties. It's a string, scope, sequence, default value does not need one. Great, um, so let's just rename our properties just so it's a little bit neater from this top here that we'll call this main sequence we'll rename that to main let's attach browser chrome blah 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 i'm just going to call it attach to amazon all right do sequence is fine let's see what else we can rename here just to make it more sense make it make more sense instead of assign we'll call this increment the listing index just like that and let's also now what we can do is let's just use a log message just to log the URL to make sure it's actually working. So we can log an information message and we are um, logging the listing URL property. All right, so log URL message and just log URL. That should be fine. Um, let's see any other properties we need to change. This seems fine. All right, let's try run this. I'm just gonna come back here to our front page and I'm gonna run this and we can see if this works. All right, so if we're here in the, um, looking at the browser, we'll be able to see it clicking into and out of the different listings. But because it's all happening in the background, we can actually open your path here and we can have a look at our output panel. So I'm just gonna hide the trace logs and we can see here there is the URL which has been logged using our log message activity. We can even see the, the indexes referenced in the URL, index one, two, three, four, etc. And there you go, it just keeps going. So if I were to leave this, it'll just continue running for all, um, for all of the 16 listings on the page. All right, but now you might be asking to yourself, 
All right, let's say we want to um, loop through every single page. I'm just going to click stop here. Um, if you're asking to yourself, maybe you want to, I'm just going to come back to show you, and you want to click next on this next button so that it can loop through every single page, how would you do that? So you'd follow a very similar approach using a while loop. And I will show you in this video, I'll keep it short, but I'll, I'll show you how to do that so you know how to do that also. So I'm just going to collapse this loop through listings and we are going to have a loop through pages. All right. So we're also going to be using a while loop, a while, and we are going to be looping instead of while I'm going to call this um, loop through pages. All right. And in the condition, we're going to have while well, the current page is less than or equal to the max number of pages. All right, so let's create a variable here. And our variable is going to be the current page. Variable type, once again, it's an integer. And the scope is main and set the value to one. All right, so we know there are how many pages? We know there are 20 pages we can see there, right? Um, so in the condition, current page is less than or equal to 20, then we want to scrape all the listings on that page. So to, so to scrape all the listings on that page, we would simply drag this into there. And once again, we are going to need to add a incrementer for our page. So we'll add this assign there. We'll say assign current page equals current page plus one. Oh, what just happened there? Let me close that. Current page equals current page plus one. Great. And we can call this increment page number. And above this, we want to use a click to click next. All right. So we're going to click on this next button. All right. Let's look at our selector here. This looks nice and dynamic. It also has the wild card. So this should be fine to click this button, right? Let's always make sure to click simulate, click to true, and also rename this funny looking name to click next page. Great, and then um, that should do it, all right? Let's say you wanna take this a step further and make this 20 dynamic. Instead of um, hard coding 20, we can use a get text activity right and we would just we can actually add this get text right at the beginning of our workflow and we can let's just rename this to get max number of pages indicate on screen and select the 20. let's look at our select over here it looks quite funny so let's just open up our ui explorer just to clean this up a bit all right, we would probably want to odd name. We wouldn't check that because that 20 is always going to change. But it's, we notice checking the class, maybe the parent class also will work. Let's also delete this funny looking long property, which probably isn't helpful at all. Great. Let's also add a wild card for this Amazon here. There you go. Validate that and highlights, it's still selecting that. So, so this looks like a, a more reliable selector. So I'm going to copy that control C, um, or we can even just click save. And okay, great. So now we can also assign a value to this um, variable. So control K, and I'm going to call this max pages. So looking at our variables here, we have a max pages, which is a string, but this should actually be an integer and there's no default value because this is being read from the browser itself. So we can scroll down and instead of having a 20 here, we can now replace that 20 with our max pages variable. All right, and there you have it. So we can actually try and run this. And what it'll do is it's going to now start looping through every single listing on page one once it reaches the end of page one, it's then going to click next. It's going to click the next button and it's going to then scrape all the um, listings on page two 
and then it's going to scrape all the listings on page three, etc., all the way till page 20 in this case. Great, so I'm gonna click stop here, um, but you can see here it's outputting the um, all the values or all the URLs inside um, the output panel over here. And that is all guys. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, if you enjoyed it, if you learned a lot about um, extracting structured data, maybe using attributes, using um, variables and selectors, if this was helpful to you, um, please like this video. Um, this is my first YouTube video, so I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed and all that. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments and I will make more videos like this if you enjoyed that. Great, thank you very much.